the mighty God we serve. Glory to the Lamb. If you knew the God that you serve, you would glorify God right now. Hallelujah. If you knew the God that you served, you would glorify him right now. Hallelujah. See, I don't know your story. Hallelujah. But I know my story. Glory to the Lamb. I know what God has done for me and my family. I know what he has done for those that I have prayed for. So I know that I know that I know that I got to give God glory on this day. Can you stand to your feet and give God glory? Has he done anything for you? Has he he saved your life has he saved your soul do you have anything to give unto god on this moment hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus he said just give him a little bit give him a little bit some of you feel like i don't have nothing else to give i'm tired god said give me that little bit that you have left and he will do something great with it he will do something mighty with it and people will look upon you and wonder who is this god that you serve give him the little bit that you got if all you got is a hallelujah then give him a hallelujah because that is the highest praise glory to god Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the children of the most high God. Know who you are. Know what you have. Glory to the Lamb of God. You are not defeated. Tell Satan he cannot count you out. You are all in for the glory of God. Hallelujah. There's some things that some of you are going through right now. It has nothing to do with you, but you're in the midst of it. It's all about your soul. It is all about the work that Jesus Christ has already done. That's what it's about. Hallelujah. That's why that little bit goes a long way. Hallelujah. I just want to share with you real quick. Hallelujah. I was in my room, and this was a, about a month and a half or so ago, and I was scheduled to minister at a women's conference, and it seems like every time someone asks you to come and you know that the Lord is sending you to go, the enemy tries harder to stop that which God is wanting you to do. And in the midnight hour where I had fallen asleep, only to be awakened at about 2 o'clock in the morning. And usually my prayer hours in the fourth watch at 3 a.m., but I woke up at 2 a.m. And when I awakened, I could not move. I could not make a sound. And in my mind, I was crying out for the Lord. And I'm like, Father, where are you? Where are you? Also in my mind, I'm like, my husband is right next to me, but he can't hear me because I cannot make a sound. And so I'm fighting without even moving my mouth, without even making a sound with my voice. And now at this point, there's a little moan that comes out. And my husband looks over and he jumps up and he says, what's wrong? And I still, I cannot speak. And there's a tear coming down the side of my face. And in my thoughts, I'm saying, Lord, not like this. I can't go out like this. Not like this. This can't be it. I need you, Jesus. Where are you? I need you. And my husband is saying, honey, are you okay? Get up. Come on. Get up. Move. I need you to stand up. Say something. And I'm just staring at him with this gaze. But in my mind, I'm telling him I can't move. I can't speak. So he comes and he moves my legs off to the side of the bed and I'm just as limp like a, just like nothing was there, but I'm still there. And he said, okay, he said, we're going to go. I'm going to take you somewhere. And I tried to shake my head in my mind. I'm moving my head saying, no, I'm going to be okay. He says, come on, I'm, I'm taking you on. He takes me and he puts me in the car and he takes me over at the hospital. And it's still in my mind. I'm still talking to the Lord. Lord, I need you. I need you to move right now. 
I need your help. Help me, Lord. This is what's going on with the conversation in my mind. And then finally, I scream in my mind. I said, get off of me. But there was no sound that came out of my mouth. There was something that shifted that was on me. The nurse came in. The doctors came in. They were hooking me up on both sides. They thought I was having a stroke. Long story short. They took me to CT scan and they did all these tests and everything. And in my mind still is laid up on the Lord. I said, Father, you have shown me miracles in others' lives. I need one right now. And I said, Lord Jesus, you said that we are to call upon your name and we shall be saved. I need salvation from whatever is going on right now. And it shifted. It moved. It lifted. And I began to move. The doctor came in and she was asking me questions and I'm, now I'm nodding my head. Now remember, I couldn't do nothing prior to, but God answered. He answered, hallelujah. It was so bad, body of Christ, that they didn't know what was going on because everything came back negative. It was so bad that they run drug tests on me. Haven't done drugs in my life. That's how bad it was. They didn't have an answer. I said, I know what it is. It was a spiritual attack. Our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. And see, when you're on a mandate for God and you are doing what God has called you to do and your feet are treaded in the right direction that God has you in, the enemy is going to try to detour you. He's going to try to distract you. He's going to try to stumble you. He's going to try to stop you. But guess what? He cannot stop that which God has anointed. God has called you. He has appointed you. And you shall go forth mightily in God. Mightily in him. We see all these things that are going on in this world. They're supposed to go on. They're going to go on. It's going to happen. Why? Because God spoke it from the beginning. He already knew what the enemy was going to do. And he has told his church what was coming. But it is the church's responsibility to continue to do what we are called to go do in spite of what is going on. We can get distracted. That means that our thoughts are no longer laid upon our mission. It's all about work. It's all about bills. It's all about whatever else is going on on the TV. I have a set schedule. I watch this at this hour. I do this at that hour. Then I do this. And then I do that. And God is nowhere in the midst of any of it. Where's the church? What is the church doing? What is the church doing? In all the midst of what we see is going on, do you see the church anywhere in that? Making a difference, making a change. See, I recall in the word of God that when Elijah had spoke to his, his servant and he told him to look, he said, go look and see. There is a cloud. And his servant went and he looked and there was nothing there. He told him, go back again and look. And he went and looked and he, there's nothing there. And then it took it again and he went he said, oh, yeah, I see it. It's about the size of a man's fist. His mind was distracted on something else. And he could not see that which was supposed to be seen. How many times have you been in a storm and in a trial and you've been fighting so many demons and you're, you can't see your way out, but there is a door right there and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's waiting on us to do our part. You have a piece of something to do. 
You have a piece of something to do. You have a piece of something to do. You have a piece of something to do. You have something to do. There is a part of you. There's something that God has given unto you that you are supposed to be doing. Hallelujah. So the manifestation of the glory of God can go forth and shine forth in a dark world. We're all a piece of the body of Christ. But when we come together unified in one faith, then God said that his glory shall come in. The church is too divided. Too divided. We got Baptists, Pentecostals. We've got Methodists. We've got, what is it? Lutheran, Catholic. We've got Church of Christ. We've got all these different denominations. And I, last I knew, Jesus is Jesus. We're all supposed to be one tribe. But see, this is how the enemy does. He tries to separate us so that he can infiltrate and come in and try to tear down. And he tries to steal, kill, and destroy. That's why you don't want to get up in the morning on Sunday when, when the pastor say we meeting at 11 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. It's hard to get out of the bed. It's the hardest day for many of us to get out of the bed to come to the house of God. Think about it. When it's time to clock in at work, we're there on time. We beat those that are supposed to be coming to greet us. Think about the things that the enemy does and he uses against us. See, I know in football you learn your, your, your opposing team's plays. There's a huddle, and the team is sitting there, and the coach shows the plays of past competitions that that team that they're getting ready to go against, he shows them, look, look at that move. Did y'all just see what he did? How can we counter that? So this is what we're going to do. That's how it is in this fight that we're fighting. We have to know how our adversary works. And once we know how he works, we can no longer fumble and stumble. But if we keep allowing those little moves that he makes to falter us, we're going to be delayed. We'll be delayed. There comes a time where we have to have a made up mind. That nothing will separate us from the love of God. Go with me to Psalm 27. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted above my enemies round about me. Therefore, will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry. 
cry with my voice have mercy also upon me and answer me when thou said seek ye my face my heart said unto thee thy face Lord will I seek hide not thy face far from me put not thy servant away in anger thou hast been my help leave me not neither forsake me O God of my salvation when my father and my mother forsake me then the Lord will take me up teach me thy way O Lord and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies for false witnesses are risen up against me and such as breach out cruelty I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living wait on the Lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart wait I say on the Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus Let's look at that verse one. The Lord is my light and my salvation. When there is darkness in your mind, clouding your thoughts, you don't know which way to turn. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. He will light the way. He will give you clear direction. He will save you from your troubles. Hallelujah. How is it that we can be there for someone else if we're drowning ourselves? If our faith is not where it is supposed to be, then how do we think that when we pray that God is hearing us if we don't believe? Think about all the things that have gone on in your life and the shortcomings that you think or thought that God has not answered in the past or the present and you wonder what happened and you still don't have that understanding but instead of you actually believing on God hallelujah you're wondering and you're doubting you're just going through the motions the religious walk and the religious talk of things but your faith is not there it is not lined up These are moments and times that the enemy comes and he tries to attack. He says, I got them right where I want them. In a moment of despair and unbelief. Many say, well, how is it that God has not yet intervened with all of this going on? He said that there will be wars. He said that there will be rumors rumors of war. He said all of this. That right there should allow you to know that he is. He is God. He is almighty. Because he has already known what was going to happen before it even came to pass. It says the Lord is the strength of my life. Look at that. The strength of my life is the Lord. It's not within yourself. That's why we're worn out. The enemy tries to sift us as wheat. He tries to beat us. He tries to pound us and wear us out. And that's why many have did a thing to where they have taken their own life. I'm trying to be mindful of the little ones that are in here. Because they say they don't have enough strength for themselves for the life that they are living see but if we can get our mind process lined up to the word of God then guess what we can overcome your life is not your own and everyone that knows you is attached to you in some way shape or form that's why they have crossed your path whether it is your blood relatives or those that are neighbors in your neighborhood, childhood friends, whatever it may be. They are still connected to you. All you have to do is trust and believe in the one true God. Hallelujah. Let's look at this right here. At verse 5, it says, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. 
In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. He said, in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. See, in your mindset, you're thinking you're still in the midst of the storm and things are going on. And you know why you're still standing? Because you were hidden. Something cannot be broken if you can't see it. If you cannot see it to put a hammer to it, it cannot be shattered. Do you understand what I'm saying? God has hidden each and every one of us throughout our lives from the destruction of the enemy. The enemy thought that he was going to take you out and God said not so because he hid you, hallelujah, in his pavilion, hallelujah. He hid you in his secret place, glory to God. The enemy might have been standing right in front of you, but he could not see you to kill you and destroy you, hallelujah. Some of you might not understand, but it'll catch on later. You'll say, that's what she was talking about. But that's how awesome God is. He is so good to us. He is so good to us that he is so merciful that he has breathed the breath of life into us this day. Because we did not have to wake up. We didn't, but there's a purpose for your life still. Still something greater that we have to accomplish. So if we look at this word again, it says, when the wicked, even my enemies and foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. He's saying right here, every disease, cancer, diabetes, AIDS, syphilis, cerebral palsy, whatever it is, it tried to kill. So whatever the doctor has given him, whatever report, know that God is going to set you upon a rock. Hallelujah. And you shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I'm just going to say this. Many of us have walked around with what they would consider terminal illnesses for years and did not know it. But that's how God sustained us. He kept us. It's when those doctors or whomever bring that bad report, fear tries to overtake us. Fear tries to wear us out. But think about it. For all we know, that very thing was in us for many, many years, and you've been fine until they told you it was there. Think about the power of the mindset. So if we can lay our mind on the Lord, hallelujah, we won't be destroyed. Amen. Hallelujah. Give God praise in this place. He said that we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. I know what God has done for me. That's why I get excited. I do. I really get excited when it's time for us to gather with the saints. I get excited when I'm taking a moment just to pray because I know that I'm going before the Lord. I get excited about these things. It should never be a burden for you to come into the house of the Lord. This is where you're going to get re-strengthened and rebuilt up and be reminded of the word of God. See, when the enemy can get us by ourselves and alone, when things are going on, that's when he can pounce on us and try to take us out as best as he knows how. But if you can take that little bit that you have left within you and give it to God, hallelujah, God will turn it around. He'll turn it around. 
Hallelujah. I want everyone to say this. I am healed. I am healed. I am made whole. I am free. I am set free by the blood of the lamb. No weapon. Come on, say that. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. No weapon. No matter what it is. Because I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If there's anyone in here who does not know this God that we're talking about on today. And you want to give your life to him. I ask that you come. He said, seek me while I may be found. He has been knocking at the doors of your heart for a long time. Will you answer? If that's you, you said, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of the the heartache, and I'm tired of the pain, and I, I know that if I just give my life to him, things will be different. If that's you, I ask that you come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If there's any of you in here that need prayer and agreement, for anything that you may be struggling with. And you said, you know what? I need help with just believing. I need someone to believe with me. If that's you, I ask you to come. Glory to God. God will meet every need. He'll meet every need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And those of you that are okay, continue to walk in his path of righteousness. Glory to God. God will uphold you, and he will keep you from falling. Glory to the Lamb of God. We're going to ask Pastor Cecil to come. Hallelujah. (laughs) Glory to God. God is good to us. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a good God. And uh, I'm so thankful that uh, Sister Tamara ministered this morning. Um, I can still remember these kids when they were rather little and still doing something for the kingdom of God. That's what this journey's about. So I'm not going to dismiss this morning. I think Sister Donna had already uh, set up for tonight. So uh, uh, let's just all stand, shake hands with somebody, tell them you love them. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock this evening.